Hello and welcome to this HOG4 tutorial which will give you a tour of the layout of a new show using HOG4 PC. We will first of all look at the window on the left which represents the left hand display on the physical consoles. Along the top we have the views toolbar. You will notice on a new show file that the first six views have already been recorded. These can be changed or new views can be added by arranging the windows as you would like holding down the record key and pressing any of the views buttons. To quickly name your view, press the set key. Views also recall the different settings and scroll bar positions within Windows, so make sure you have made any such changes before you record. You can cycle through different banks of views by pressing the arrow button. By holding down the pig key and pressing the arrow button, you can cycle backwards through these views. The Views directory can be opened by pressing the Views button followed by the Open key. You can rename your views here and also select whether they will be additive or not. To change this option, either double click on a cell or alternatively you can touch the cell and press the Set key. At the bottom of the screen we have the Playback toolbar. Information for Lists, Scenes or Group Inhibit Masters is displayed above each of the 10 playback faders. On the physical consoles, this information is displayed directly above each fader. For whichever fader is chosen, an expanded version of this information is displayed here. Three key pieces of information are displayed to the left-hand side of the toolbar. We have the level of the Grand Master, which page we are on, and below that, the status of the rate wheel, which on the HOG4 console is changed by pressing the rate key. We will now move over to the right hand display and at the top we have the Windows toolbar which is primarily used for manipulating windows to form your views. At the left hand side of the toolbar we have four buttons which offer quick access to some key windows. Unlike recalling views, these windows will open in the same size and position with the same settings as when they were last closed without the need to re-record them. If we open the output window the next four buttons allow us to navigate around that window by moving right, left, down and up. We can copy the screen, change the size of the screen and move it around the window. We can also move that window onto a different display. We can maximise the window and Focus will toggle between different windows, making them the active window. By unlocking, we are then able to manually resize the window and move it to wherever we like. Finally, pressing Close will close the active window and Close All will close every window on all your displays. If your console doesn't have the Close All button, then it's handy to record a view with no open windows and call this view Close All. Moving down to the bottom of the display, we have four toolbars. Firstly, the Soft Keys, which is a dynamic toolbar which changes depending on the action which you're performing, such as pressing Record or holding down the Open key. Above that, we have the Command Line, where your selections and commands will be displayed. To the right of the command line we have the status of the function keys, whether they are acting as kind keys or command keys. Toggle between these two modes by holding down pig and pressing the enter key. Next we have the status of the trackball, indicating whether it is used as a mouse or for the pan and tilt of moving lights. On the HOG4 and FullBore 4 consoles, by default this mode is changed by pressing the top right of the trackball buttons. Moving along we have the status of the keyboard, whether it is used for text entry or for shortcuts for the console. Pressing the pause break key on the keyboard toggles between these two modes. As in the playback toolbar, here we have a second indication of the page we are using. Our active editor is shown here, and next to that our chosen master, an indication of the status of the network and the time. Above the command line is the parameter toolbar. When a fixture is selected and an encoder wheel turned, 
the value for that parameter is displayed in the associated box. The wheel sets available here are changed by selecting different kinds such as position, colour and beam. You can also create your own wheel sets and recall these quickly using the user kind keys and this will be covered in a future tutorial. The slotted toolbar allows quick access to slotted parameters such as colour and gobo wheels. To the right we also have quick access to control commands such as lamp on, lamp off and reset. In the next tutorial we will take a detailed look at patching fixtures. Thank you for watching.